It's fantastic when a game just seems like something new, and these games are just that. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 recent games with unique game concepts. Starting off at number 10, it's Ghost of Tsushima. This is probably one of the more minor things we'll put on the list, but there's a really clever mechanic that is well implemented in this game called The Guiding Wind. Ghost of Tsushima is an open world action game, which means there's a lot of points of interest dotting your map. But instead of just slapping a big checkpoint on your map and telling you to go there, the game instead has this mechanic where you can swipe the touchpad on the controller and a gust of wind will appear guiding you in the correct direction. It's a really subtle effect that fixes the problem you get in a lot of open world games where your screen is just cluttered with checkpoints and markers and your HUD is... T-O-O-M-U-C-H. But with the wind, it's just you, your horse, and the island of Tsushima. There's a secondary mechanic related to this where the golden birds of Tsushima will sometimes appear and guide you to nearby points of interest. It's another way the game pushes you to explore the island without just littering it with hundreds of markers. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff to highlight on the map, but you don't have to, and being able to look around without a huge HUD getting in your way is, I mean, it's pretty unique for a game like this. And number nine is Watch Dogs Legion. Like, love it or hate it, there is no denying that Legion's play as anyone system isn't at least ambitious. And to give the developers credit, they really didn't half-ass it. They could have easily made it so there's a few recruitable characters in the open world and that's it, but they really made it so that if you see an NPC wandering around, you can almost always recruit them and play as them. How all of that works is like crazy simple too. As you play the game and wander around London, you see someone interesting, you scan them, and everyone has certain upgrades and downgrades. Like if you see a construction worker who can freely access construction sites, they might be able to summon a cargo drone, etc., etc. Or you might see somebody in hospital scrubs who they could make it so other recruits who get knocked out can be revived quicker. Then there's a lot of, and I mean a lot of different things like this. Part of the fun is finding the more out there characters like a hypnotist who can make guards turn on each other and these living statues that can hide in plain sight. Another thing that's impressive is that each one of these characters is completely voiced, and not all of them sound great or anything, but they're not just silent protagonists during cutscenes. The game was pretty much a mess technically when it came out, but the main mechanic of the game, being able to play as anyone, is actually really unique and super interesting. And number 8 is Doom Eternal, and you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. It looks like any other hardcore FPS throwback, but the weird thing about it, it's really not. It's actually got a lot more in common with a game like Devil May Cry. Like, it's a first-person character action game, and that is a crazy unique concept. Just think about all the abilities you have to contend with at any given time. I mean, you've got guns, of course, but there's also a double jump, a dash, there's sidearms like the frag grenade or the ice bomb, there's the flame belch which causes enemies to drop armor pickups, the blood punch which charges from performing glory kills, and the doom blade which is a one-hit kill weapon and you do not get a lot of ammo for at all. Like, there's a lot of stuff to be thinking about and a lot of it has a cooldown. Now, maybe in a different game you'd be able to ignore some of these mechanics, but not this one because it is hard as balls. By the end of the game, if you don't start mastering dodging with the dash, getting armor with the flame belch, and whipping out a blood punch on certain dangerous enemies, you're just gonna be dying a lot. And this is on top of an already insane, fast, hectic combat system. Basically, the combat in Doom Eternal is way more complex than any previous Doom game. Hell, I mean, probably a lot of first-person shooters period. It's not exactly reinventing the wheel, but play this game enough and you'll realize how different and unique it is compared to other, especially retro style FPS games. Also, it's just good as hell. No pun intended. Number seven is Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is a Yakuza game with turn-based battles like an RPG. Don't know why. It's totally nuts, in fact. The Yakuza franchise is famous for two things. The manly man protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu, and it's bone-punching beat-em-up style combat, which is really a joy, in my opinion. For Yakuza 7, though, they wanted to mix things up, and I don't know if anyone expected this. Along with a new protagonist and a new emphasis of being a team rather than a lone wolf, the game completely reworks the tried-and-true battle system of the previous games, and it's now basically a full-blown turn-based RPG with a menu to select attacks, special abilities, there's mana, there's RPG-like stats, and that's not what really makes it unique. 
we've seen RPGs before. It's the fact that they just took a series of crime action games and was like, eh, let's do it as a JRPG. Why not? I mean, that's original. Like seeing characters line up like we would expect from an old Final Fantasy game, but in a modern Japanese city is amusing. But what's really surprising is that the game is really good and the RPG stuff isn't just a goofy novelty. It's a really fantastic example of a JRPG. At number six is Hades. Yes, it's a roguelike game with randomized levels that if you die, the game restarts. That basic concept isn't anything new. But how this game incorporates those ideas into its story is just incredibly unique and cool. So the story is that you're the son of the Greek god Hades and you want to escape the underworld. Nothing surprising here. Why would you want to stay there? I wouldn't want to stay there. But you start to notice that other characters start referencing your escape attempts. Certain ones have special dialogue depending on how you die or what happened. Like characters will be impressed when you defeat certain enemies or make fun of you for dying. Like there's a ton of variety. And while it's something we've seen other roguelike games toy around with, they, they've never done it to the extent that this is done. It's a great game that does a lot of things really well, but it uses the structure of a roguelike to tell its story. And the way it does it is just, it's something special and there's a lot of cool surprises I won't spoil. It's a game that continually impressed me though. And number five is Carry On. And no, not like what you do on an airplane with your bags. It's an action game where instead of playing as a heroic scientist or a space marine, you play as the monster they would usually be fighting. It's not really an idea that has ever been done, but the concept combined with the gameplay really stands out like incredibly well. You're just this nasty blob of goop. You explore around this underground facility, you upgrade, you grow and get weirder and scarier, and you basically devour tons of humans. It is not a cakewalk though, especially at first. A few guys with a, some minor guns can kill you pretty quickly, so you gotta do hit and run tactics. But you'll start to get really large, and it's really surreal controlling this big hunk of flesh in a side-scrolling platforming game, but it actually feels really natural. Also, it's very violent, but also uniquely fast in a way that even if I think the game concept didn't make it unique, the actual gameplay would still be unique. So it's unique all the way down and we love to see it. At number four is Man Eater, which is another game where you play as the monster. Not quite as nasty as Carry On though. I mean, there has been another game where you play as the shark Jaws Unleashed from 2006, but this game does some unique things with the gameplay that make it feel more like you're actually playing a shark instead of like an underwater jet that can ram things. For instance, how you can evolve starting off as a baby, you can barely take on an eel and you go all the way up to being a Megalodon for, I don't know, whatever reason. I'm not gonna complain. But by the end of the game, you're absolutely huge. You can eat entire boats for breakfast if you want to. Also, like that's how you level up, consuming various different things. Like fish give you certain proteins, but basically anything is good for the shark in the game. Even the garbage left on the seafloor can help you level up if you eat it. It's all wrapped up in an open world that's a little repetitive, but it's also highly entertaining. It's hilarious watching the shark flop around on dry land, eating all the hapless tourists it can find. Like part of it is the presentation, which frames the game as a fake nature documentary, where the announcer pops in to give shark facts once in a while. Like it just works really well. It's fun. At number three is Mortal Shell with its body switching mechanic. Yeah, it's another Dark Souls-like game, which is not unique in and of itself, but the concept of the body switching, which instead of leveling up your character to certain builds like you'd get in a standard game like this, you find instead different shells out in the world, each one filling a certain role. So basically, instead of being stuck to a certain build, you can swap between, like, say, being a nimble thief or a heavy armored warrior whenever you want, which is obviously pretty liberating compared to how these games normally go, where once you put your points down to certain stats, you're stuck and there's no going back. You're basically free. In this game, you can experiment really freely. Each shell has its own set of skills to unlock, but they're totally usable without any of those upgrades. So if you're having trouble with a certain boss as a heavy guy, you can just switch to a thief or a guy with magic power if you want. Again, it's liberating, and the one thing that makes this game feel really unique compared to all the other Dark Souls clones out there. At number two is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, which is so unique it's actually kind of hard to explain. It was created by the same developers who made games like Dragon's Crown and Odin Sphere. And the game uses really lush and detailed anime artwork to create something that is just really different, even different from the developer's usual output. It's a story about a bunch of kids battling kaiju in a futuristic Japan using giant mechs. 
Nothing too surprising there if you know anything about anime, but it's also a story with 13 different protagonists that is not told linearly. Also, the giant mech battles put in these weird abstract real-time strategy sections. Like, it's just a truly strange game all around, with a narrative that seems almost impossible to follow at first with tons of characters, some of whom have different names depending on where they're at in the timeline. But eventually, it all does start to come together. And the actual combat segments maybe aren't the best thing in the world, but the story and artwork really make the game stand out. It's really one of the most unique games to come out in years, let alone just this year. The fact that it's actually good when it could have been a total mess is really impressive, and it's a game pretty well worth looking into if you like this sort of thing. And finally, at number one, Bug Snacks, which, we, yeah, we're gonna talk about Bug Snacks. I mean, look at it. It's a game where you help out Muppets by capturing bugs that look like food. And when you feed the bugs to them, their body parts transform into those things. Food, specifically, for some reason. It all boils down to being a puzzle game where you explore an island, talk to various people living there, and help them out by capturing various bugs you see all over the place. Most of the puzzles involve working out the best way to capture these critters. Some are as easy as laying a trap out in their path, but most of them are a lot trickier. The puzzle solving is a lot of fun, and the story is weirdly in-depth for a game that looks like a big joke, but it's really unique just all around. Kind of creepy, too, to be completely honest, but mostly unique. And a quick bonus for you, Moon Remix RPG Adventure. Like, it doesn't really count because it actually came out in 1997 in Japan, but we didn't get it outside of Japan until this year. Like, it's an RPG where instead of fighting monsters and leveling up, you reach out uh, to villagers and help them with their problems and catch the souls of the monsters that the actual hero killed. This is a game where the usual RPG hero is actually the villain, killing innocent creatures and causing chaos all over. It's kind of unusual enough, but the game has a weird idiosyncratic tone throughout. It was one of the most unique games ever when it came out in 97, and it still remains a pretty singular, different game to this day. But what are some unique games you've played? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see those videos first is to click subscribe and do not forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.